Hey guys, this is Tornar and today we've got the new Dark Hunters team. We've got Morbius and Dr. Voodoo confirmed coming to Marvel Strike Force in the next patch 5.10. And I'm pretty excited about these guys. Supernatural has always been one of those teams that's like, it's not meta, but I still loved it a lot. Like similar to when the original uh, Sinister Six came out. They weren't super meta. They weren't kind of game breaking or anything like that, but they were a team that I really did enjoy. So... We've got Morbius here. They've got a very dark, monstery look with him. For a start, he's got like the Voldemort nose here. Uh, very much like a kind of bat rather than kind of like a fully evolved rather than kind of like this half-half kind of thing. Um, which I do find very, very interesting. And then Dr. Voodoo, I have to say, he's got one of my favorite models in the game. Like, just so dapper, like the pocket watch. It's so detailed and stuff. Like, I think that, like... The art team over at Marvel Strike Force and uh, over at Boundless, I think, deserve a lot of recognition because they just do some really amazing work. So I, I'm very happy with these. So I'm going to go through the characters. First of all, we've got three upgraded characters, two on the team and one not on the team, but they are the best fifth currently. And then the two new characters. So first of all, Elsa. Now, her basic here is going to be dealing additional piercing damage, uh, an extra 35% piercing damage per shot, which is pretty decent. Uh, then her special here, she's dealing additional damage as well. It's going for 300% damage up to 320 and attacking the most injured for an extra 20% as well. So this is going to help you kind of finish it off. This team is aimed towards war offense. Um, I'll talk about them a little bit later in regards to that, but they are a war offense team, very much so. Her ultimate here, they've got her giving extra damage, like an additional damage here, an additional damage per supernatural or dark hunters. Anyone killed by this attack can't be revived. Now, we talked to the devs about this, and they basically said, look, this isn't always going to happen, but when you can pull it off, it's going to be great because it means that they can... Ha um, you can just like completely kill off like a Shang-Chi or something to stop them being able to revive. Then on war offense, if there's three or more Dark Hunter allies, this attack can't be blocked. So this is important to keep in mind. It's three or more Dark Hunter allies. Elsa has a Dark Rider tag. Ghost Rider does. Um, Morbius and Brother Voodoo do have that tag. Now here, this part here, to keep in mind that this also uh, affects Dark Hunters. So you just have to have three or more Supernatural or Dark Hunter allies there. And this part here, the extra accuracy also works with Dark Hunters as long as you've got additional ones of those. So she's going to have like almost max. Well, she's going to have max accuracy basically. So she's not going to miss all right, Ghost Rider here got a massive buff to his stats as well. Here, his bait, uh, his ultimate is not going to be able to be blocked. That was one of the major issues with him, is that anytime you use his ultimate, you have to make sure that they don't have a deflex or anything, because otherwise you're dealing like basically half damage kind of thing. It's just not going to be great. So being able to have that unblockable as long as it's charged is amazing. This part here, while it doesn't list it, also will grant that ability energy to the uh, Dark Hunters. And down here, this additional focus got buffed. The max health and everything got buffed up. However, I don't think Ghost Rider is really like the pinnacle of this team anymore. The team kind of revolves around him plus Morbius, I think. Um, those two are kind of like the anchor points working together. However, they're not kind of like... Like, I think that they both do great things for the team, especially like this part here, giving the negative effects. Like, obviously, these characters are all very negative effect heavy. So, chucking out heaps of spill, uh, heaps of uh, speed bar, which is amazing because means you can catch up to these really fast characters uh, on the enemy team. Now, Mordo did get a lot of buffs here. You can see that they clearly buffed up his stats and everything. They made it so on war offense, this part here is unblockable. And if he's got three or four or more Mystic Allies, the chance to blind is increased. However, you will notice that he got no other changes besides that. I am about 95% sure that's because Mordo is not going to be a permanent addition to this team. Werewolf by Night or something like that is going to end up being the fifth character, and then Mordo is going to go on to a different team. However, obviously, when they were testing the team, a four-man squad isn't going to be going as great against a full five-man squad of the enemies. So they wanted to put someone on that, so Mordo ended up filling that hole there. They wanted to buff up Mordo and stuff and make it so that he kind of works better there. So they added this bit into his kit there. So it's going to be great to kind of use Mordo, and Mordo is the best fifth, but you can play around with other characters like Doctor Strange or um, anyone 
Scarlet Witch or anyone else who you want to kind of use as a fifth here. But Mordo is definitely going to be the fit best character. All right. So now as for the new characters, Morbius. So the things you'll notice here first is he is a mystical character. I know what you're thinking. Everyone down in the comments is going to be, Torna, this is a bio character. Morbius is a bio character. I do understand that. He's definitely got his powers from a bio, bio origins. He's a biological character. He's created by bio serums. However, his powers are kind of mystical. Like he's basically like a vampire adjacent a living vampire um so it it makes sense that he is mystic at least to me uh it makes sense that he can be a mystical character because of the fact that like even in the comics they kind of change it around a little bit it's not a consistently the fact that he's like a living vampire or anything like that he's got some other vampire traits at different times it kind of changes depending on the writer and everything which makes sense but yeah they've gone with a mi mystic here he's a city character and a villain i do think that this is going to be a decent character for dark dimension but the fact that he's got kind of mystic means that it's less likely you're going to be wanting to use him there so he's basic here. He's attacking, stealing away health, bypassing heal block with it, and in war offense, applying those bleeds. On his special, he's applying lots of bleeds. There's so many bleeds out with this guy and attacking the primary and adjacents. And then finally, his ultimate here is attacking the primary target, flipping defense up. This should say defense up, not defense down, and deflect. And then he's going to chain to adjacents and flip those as well. On war offense, if he has three or more dark hunter allies, he's going to be applying trauma, which is obviously going to be important to counter heroes for hire. Trauma is so important against them. Heal block and disrupt for two turns to Hero City. So you can see here, this is specifically calling out that Hero City team, um, like the um, uh, the Heroes for Hire team, like Hit City Heroes, clearly kind of calling that out there and applying trauma and heal block to other Hero City allies that are secondaries. He's going to, on war offense, make that not counterable and not blockable. He's going to deal an extra 30% piercing damage, an extra 20% drain to himself and all the Dark Hunter allies. And then on spawn, he's going to gain three uh, on spawn. If there's three or more Dark Hunter allies, he's going to apply blind to the four highest damage Hero City enemies. So clearly he's just made to kind of blind um, Heroes for Hire straight off the bat. Extra focus if he's against Hero Cities and gain damage for himself and all Dark Hunters. So he's very much a high damage, high uh, debuffing controller. Chucking out a million debuffs there, which is going to activate uh, the passive on Ghost Rider to be able to allow you to just keep going and everything. He's going to be great with Striker, obviously, because he's going to be able to chuck out um, the additional heal uh, here, additional bleeds with Striker. So he's going to be a great character overall. Uh, so this team is kind of semi-reliant on Dr. Voodoo as well, because he's where they're going to be able to get heaps of their healing. He's uh, basic here. He's stealing away death proof and healing up allies on his basic. Keep in mind, this will not work on his striker ability. They tested it and it was just too powerful. So... It's not going to do this part or this part on his striker, just deal damage. He's also a hero here. Keep that in mind. Uh, if you kind of need some hero characters, it's going to be a decent one. On his special, he's applying ability block and defense down to the primary target. And then defense down to adjacents, mind controlling characters. They're dealing additional damage from mind controls as well. He's going to barrier himself and all dark hunters and then any adjacent non-dark hunter allies. So... If you have, obviously, more, uh, more, uh, Mordo on the team, you want to put Mordo next to Voodoo because otherwise he's not going to get that barrier there. And then on War Offense, it can't be blocked. The reason this is important is because block decreases the chance that you're applying debuffs. So making it so that it's not blockable means that you're able to make sure you're applying these. And then his ultimate here is honestly amazing. It steals away health. It's redistributing 150% of the health, which is completely new. Uh, previously, it's if you steal health, you redistribute the, that amount of health. And it's usually capped as well. However, he's going to be able to do it... Um, and redistribute additional health there too. And it bypasses heal block. It also will ignore death proof so you can kill people with it. It clears away all the negative effects of dark hunters. And then in war offense, apply uh, the immunity to all the mystic allies. 
Uh, this part here is really cool. He's gaining speed for death proof that he's got. He's going to be getting death proof whenever he drops low. Whenever an ally dies, he's gaining death proof. And he's going to apply offense up to your whole team. If five or more enemies have speed up, you're going to be getting extra crit chance. And then on spawn, if you've got three or more Dark Hunter allies, generate two ability energy for four random Dark Hunter allies or self that were not at full energy. So you're going to be able to get a whole lot of energy at the start of this war offense phase to be able to kind of get your abilities going faster, like getting this up turn one, basically, which is going to be great. All right, so what is this team good for? Obviously, war offense. You're going to be a great war offense team, a heroes for hire counter. They're going to be able to take out heroes for hire. Now, they have been tested against the new city team, the new, uh, well, not city team, the new Young Avengers team. They go decently, but they aren't able to clear them. They're not, like, that's kind of a tier above them, basically. Like, they're up here, Heroes for Hire is here, and they can take out Heroes for Hire pretty easily. But the other team's got, like, counters for them and stuff to kind of make sure that they're not able to do anything, uh, which is unfortunate that they're not able to take out that Young Avengers squad. However, they were kind of developed at the same time and then put together, and they're like, oh, we can't clear them. Oh, that's okay. We can make it so that they're still really great. Like, releasing the counter at the same time as the team comes out probably means that they wouldn't sell as many Young Avengers. But the good thing about Young Avengers is they're designed to kind of... Um, like basically be like two hits like you can take two hits in them so if you wanted to use your dark hunters turn one and then something else afterwards after you kind of dropped out uh drop down the three kind of city heroes because they get the debuffs here and everything then you definitely can all right so we're going to watch them first heroes for hire first so here we go boom 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 So you can see they're chucking out the blinds there. These guys are obviously insanely fast. So the way that they've kind of countered the speed meta that I know a lot of people have been worrying about, including me, is blind them, turn one. If they're blinded, they can't look. They're not doing anything. Um, you've got Shang-Chi just wasting his ultimate here. It doesn't matter because he's doing nothing. You're just missing, 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 missing there. Missed everything missing. Boom, boom, boom. Miss. Right, so you can see that they just keep missing. They're playing this on slow for some reason. Like they're playing it on one times, but they're going to come in with the holy. Uh, all right. Well, that was an animation. I'm actually surprised they don't have something to flip um, positive effects into negative effects on their team. Because that's a great way to be able to counter the heroes for hire. And use the ultimate here on Colleen. Slowly walk up. Here, have the penna stare. Look into my eyes. Boom. And the trauma means that now they're not doing anything. The defense down and the mind control coming in. Unfortunately, didn't get the kill there. They're playing this really slowly. This is annoying me. All right, let's skip, just skip ahead. Boom, so you can see like I want to see that Ghost Rider die, just to make sure that he is chucking out that ability energy to everyone. Yep, he chucked it all out to everyone. So, skip ahead, and you can see that they just completely destroy them. See? Now, they did lose Ghost Rider there, but Ghost Rider kind of ends up buffing them up. And as I said, he's not as much the kind of pillar of the team as much anymore so having morbius alive means that morbius will be able to kind of just destroy them brother voodoo can keep you alive and everything all right next up we've got them versus eternals so this is like eternals mixed with the infinity watch so we can kind of just skip it forward a bit here 
That animation is so funny. Boom. And there we go. So then they're just gonna kind of rip through them. And I'll skip forward just to show you guys. I just want to show you guys that they can beat them. There's like, there's no point sitting around watching the videos for very much longer. And as you can see, boom, boom. And Infinity Watch slash Eternals is gone. So I don't know about you guys. I, I'm going to be interested to see how much I want to work on these guys because yes, they do look great and they look like they're going to be able to take out heroes for hire and having an extra heroes for hire counter is going to be amazing. But do I want to take them up to the level of heroes for hire or am I happy with the counters that I've got for them already? Um, it means that you don't have to use your weapon X on heroes for hire and instead can use them on the new, um, the new Young Avengers team, which is obviously going to be important, but I don't know guys, let me know what you guys think about the Dark Hunters team. I am, I'm pretty excited for um, Brother Voodoo first. Like I, I don't really know much about Brother Voodoo, but it's made me kind of want to go read his comics because he just looks amazing. Um, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. That's it for today. Have a great day and goodbye.